When someone you love is grieving, how can you really help? This is such an important topic, and this video is being filmed in 2021, and I think it's more important than ever speaking about this because, unfortunately, since the pandemic, so many people have lost loved ones, and grieving is such a, such a difficult, difficult situation to go through in life. And we just sometimes don't know how to be there for others, especially in this current environment. So let's take a look at this article. I read once in a while from Tiny Buddha because I think their information hits on certain topics that are important and they do it in a kind of concise way. You can always find more articles and information going more in depth on these topics, but I always just want to highlight the actual theme of it so then you can later go away and research more on your own. So this article is entitled When Someone You Love is Grieving How to Really Help by Angie Schultz. They always start this articles out with a quote, the friend who can be silent with us in a moment of despair or confusion, who can stay with us in an hour of grief and bereavement, who can tolerate not knowing, not curing, not healing, and face us with the reality of our powerlessness. That is a friend who cares by Henry. I think you pronounce it no win. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that, but I love that. I think silence amongst someone you really care for and trust needs to be more and more valued because you don't need to say everything all the time and just create jibber jabber. If you're with someone that you feel comfortable with and care about and they respect that silence between you, that's just an amazing thing. So I, re I love that they point it out like that. It's hard to stand at the edge of someone else's grief. There's the awkwardness. You always feel a little like an uninvited guest who arrived late and missed the first half of the conversation. A conversation that turns out to be a wrestle between another person and the deepest parts of their soul. What can you say when you realize you've uh, um, barged in on an interaction so intimate, so personal that you just want to avert your eyes and slink quietly away? Then there are the triggers. Grief has a way of unsettling everyone in the proximity. It stirs up on your own unhealed parts. It is any wonder that we have the instinct to smooth over the other person's emotions, take everything back to normal before it has the chance to stir up something inside us. But there's the thing. Your friends need you. Your family members need you. When are we grieving? We need our closest loved ones more than ever. I've had moments of not knowing how to help, too. That's why I'm sharing my insights about how what healed and what hurt when I lost my husband to cancer. So this is a really, 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 really deep story she's going to be going into. Um, I recommend that if you're really interested, read this in more detail. I'm just going to try to highlight some of the main points she's talking about, you know, as I usually do. But you can definitely go into it in more detail and read for yourself because she has several paragraphs of this. But I just want hit, to hit on some of her main issues. So she says, don't say nothing. It would be easier to say nothing, to bury that whisper inside that nudges you to reach out, to focus on the busyness of your own obligations, your life, instead of drawing closer to my dance with death. I get it, but being on the other side, it hurts. It hurts to be the straw and to have you look the other way. Please don't ignore me. I know it's a risk. You may get it all wrong, or you may say the textbook right things only to have me not receive them. My emotions are up and down all over the place. Some days I'm hard to deal with, but this risk, it's the kind that matters. I'm just going to scroll down. Her next point says, don't ask how I'm doing. Sounds counterintuitive, right? I just told you not to ignore me and ask, how are you doing? 
is the first thing we say in most situations to show concern. The thing is, answering this question when I'm grieving is painful. It's so painful that immediately before and after my husband's death to cancer, our daughters actively avoided going places where people might ask, how are you doing? That's a really important point because when people are going through a situation such as that and through such a horrible illness, man, we just don't know what to say. Sometimes when you say, hey, how are you in this or that, this may not be the right thing, you know? You can read that in more detail, and I'll just scroll down. She says, what to do instead? Pretend I already answered you. You aren't going to be satisfied by cheerful, fine. Then you ask how I'm doing. You won't believe me because you can see the grief behind my eyes, despite my smile. And even if you haven't been through my experience, something deep down tells you that this is big. Too big to be neatly resolved and tucked away in the category of memory. Trust yourself. You're right. Later, further down the article, she says, Don't tell me that time heals all wounds. That's really interesting. Uh, Even if that were true, it still won't be helpful. What I need for you to see where I am now, to witness for me, and share with me this intensity. I want you to understand how raw, how immediate, how overwhelming the suffering is right now. But it isn't true that time heals wounds, at least not always. Some pain lessens with time. Other pain festers and worsens. Some people grow from tragedy. They become deeper and stronger and more beautiful Others become a withered, gnarled caricature caricature of what they used to be. And it isn't really time that makes a difference. It's heart and hope. It's choice. It's victory. In this fight against despair and discouragement, don't minimize my battle. Wow, that's a really, really powerful section she's talking about. I think that's really important to point out that. These situations do have their own way of unfolding, and we have to respect that process. Um, I won't read this in detail, but she says what to do instead is stand by me. Do you want to help me in this battle? Then stand with me. Wow. You can read that in more detail. Don't tell me to call if I need anything. There's another section. Um, What to do instead. Help me. Don't. Tell me what to feel, what to do instead. Believe in me. Further down, she says, you will heal from yourself as you help me heal. So this last paragraph says, you want to help, even though it's hard, sharing this journey. Thank you for trying. I know it's awkward and emotional and brings up feelings. It would be easier not to feel. But there's something beyond altruism you might not have considered this journey is actually as much for you as it is for me. These broken pieces inside you, the ones that are triggered when you witness my pain, they can also be healed as you share in my journey. I'm not saying it's easy, but as you sit with pain, mine or your own, you learn that in a way deeper than words, that hope matters, that love prevails. And as you feel the depth of those hardest emotions, you start to believe in a way raw and real that life is beautiful, even its shadowy underbelly. I love that, shadowy underbelly. What a great phrase there. Most of all, as you watch me stand naked and vulnerable, yet determined as a warrior in the face of so much grief, you start to believe in me, not the kind of faith that is padded and comfortable, insulated by layers of platitudes, a faith born in fire, gritty, pure, and powerful. And as you believe in me, you can also come to believe in yourself. Well, thank you, Angie. I encourage anyone who wants to read that in more detail and go through more detail, please check out 
on Tiny Be- Tiny Beauty, Tiny Buddha. Um, that article, and especially as it relates to grief, because look, in the end, it's really hard to know what to do when someone goes through that process. I've had to do it in different circumstances, and it really, really is a challenge. And I encourage anyone who's feeling this way now and having to be there and console someone to do your best, find the best possible information out there that can really help you have better understanding what to do and have good insights and tips to allow you to know what to do for people in that situation. And I would love to know your thoughts, you know, are those good ideas? Do you have other ideas that are good um, to help people through grief? Please comment below and take care everyone.